Disconnected. Hello. Connection Hello. specific DNS suffix. Description. Microsoft ISO adapter 2. Physical address 00000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000000
braille not ta note takers, low vision technology, and anything else tech related. He works with JAWS, which is a uh, screen reader, Windows Eyes, and NVDA screen readers. He teaches teachers and students to successfully navigate websites and programs that they are required to use in their districts. He also teaches the use of the Braille Note as well as the Braille Sense Note Takers. These devices are basically a laptop computer for students with a refreshable Braille display. He also provides training on using a refreshable Braille display with an iOS device. Mr. Brown works with book readers such as APH Bookport Plus. He helps students and teachers learn to download and move books to these readers. He works with both dis distance and near low vision devices. These include the Visual Book and APH, the Smart Locks, handheld magnifier, and many more. Um, I'm not going to go on, but the organization, PTA Iowa Braille Tatures School, uh, runs low vision clinics across the state, and they also run a um, um, summer camp, right? So with that, I'm going to leave uh, chat to it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So she, uh, how do you pronounce your name? I'm sorry. Zaira called me here and said I was going to present to her and a couple people. So <laughs> I'm thinking she owes me out of this deal. I don't know. So uh, like she said, my name is Chad Brown. Um, EPAEA case load chain. This is going to keep talking. People keep updating my Dropbox folders. Sorry. Um, I am an assistive technology consultant for the Iowa Braille School. That's uh, Iowa Braille and Sight Saving School is the official name for the state, um, but now it's just considered the Iowa Braille School. What I wanted to do this morning first is kind of give a little background on myself, talk about my role and use of technology through the years, and then I'm wanting to kind of go through a website using a screen reader and leave time for questions. As I'm rattling on today, if you have questions, I am blind, so do not raise your hand. <laughs> Just spout them out. We'll be fine. Um, I am originally from Iowa. Grew up um, in southeast Iowa in a little town called Wapalo. And over the years, I've moved around the state working for various area education agencies and most recently for the Iowa Braille School as a teacher of the visually impaired and using technology in my job for multiple things. So this job um, I took was kind of a good transition for me because I enjoy the technology and I've used it so much that it's it's kind of fun and it's interesting. So from where technology is now, such as um, Zaira talked about braille note takers, accessing screen readers, um, websites, all that kind of stuff. I started out with an Apple IIe computer with an Echo speech synthesizer in 1980 or 81 maybe. And you're able to use five and a half inch floppy disks to type. Um, little programs to make it count or something. So I've, we've come a long way. Um, for kids who are blind and visually impaired in the state, over the years we've had various models of braille embossers so we can print out braille production books or worksheets for students. Um, they were gigantic and extremely loud. I remember when I was in third grade I got one and they set it up in the hallway when they were trialing it out and they fired this thing up and the whole school came to the hallway <laughs> to see what in the world that noise was. Um, they're still loud, they still sound like giant popcorn poppers. But um, So students across the state have access to a lot of these kinds of technologies that we've discussed, um, that Zaire discussed with braille note takers, um, computers with screen readers, all sorts of those kind of devices. When I was uh, in high school, I received a Braille and Speak, which is a pr another note-taking device without a refreshable Braille display. And it had, I don't know, hardly any memory. You had dedicated cables. And I carried around a small Kodak printer with tractor feed paper to all my classes. So I would print off my assignments and give them to my teachers. And now I teach students to type their assignments on a computer or a personal note-taker and just email them to their teacher. So we've come a long way. So in the state of Iowa, we have teachers of the visually impaired who are employed by the Iowa Braille School. Des Moines Public and one other teacher in Northern Iowa do not fall under that umbrella. So these teachers are assigned an area, a geographic area, and they work with students in that area. And those students may be blind, they may be multiply impaired, they may be low vision. My job is to 
work with them when their needs arise to train on different pieces of technology. To do that, we also run an assistive device center out of the Iowa Braille School campus. And this is a lending library where we purchase the latest technology, keep it in our library, and teachers and districts are able to check these devices out to use for trial basis to collect data to show that a student needs access to this device. We loan them out for students when their, their device breaks, which with technology, as you know, happens quite frequently, especially with children. I dropped my Braille note taker. Oh, geez. <laughs> Um, Braille note takers are over $5,000. So dropping those is not a good idea. Um, so we loan those out for that. And we do um, trainings for you know whoever requests them. And like Zaira said, we run low vision clinics. We had our last one yesterday in Coralville. We saw 13 students who were mostly low vision. Um, we had uh, four no-shows yesterday, which is unfortunate. Um, we show Technology, if the uh, optometrist deems it necessary, such as a Visio book, which I didn't bring one in, I could have, um, which is a distance and near device a student can fold up, stick in their backpack, put down on the desk, turn it on, and they can put a piece of paper under it, and it'll magnify that, or they can flip the camera and look at the board. That's right, I get it. Okay. We'll see if you can still hear me or not. Trying, trying. <laughs> so, okay. We also work with um, iOS devices. In the past few years, it's been amazing with Apple's technology, how their devices are out of the box accessible for students who are blind and visually impaired. So a student can walk into the Apple store, buy an iPad, iPhone, iPod Touch, whatever, enable voiceover, and that device will immediately talk to the student. Um, I can plug in my cable and I'd show you that really quick. Uh, I have an, uh, an iPhone and if the cable will work with my case, we'll see. Uh, won't go in. Anyway, we can, I can have, you guys can come up, I can show you that later on too. But um, enabling voiceover on an iPhone is just as simple as telling Siri to do it or going into your accessibility settings and do it. And then once that's done, your, your iOS device is enabled for you. So whatever you touch on the screen, it speaks. If you want to activate it, you double tap it. This has been great. Um, when Macs first got big in the you know, late 80s, early 80s, they worked with screen readers. And then that kind of fell apart and they stopped doing anything with that. So people would say, oh, I want to get my son a new computer. Should I get him a Mac? No, don't do that. <laughs> so now um, with iOS and all Apple products, they have voiceover built right in. So you can buy a new Mac computer and get a new uh, iBook, turn it on, you're ready to go do a certain command, a function, control, F something, I can't remember. But uh, you're able to activate voiceover that way, as well as any low vision settings for zooming in and doing things like that. So in my job going around the state, you know, I, I never know what um, staff is going to want. Screen reader wise, in the state of Iowa, we had a grant years ago to provide Window Eyes, which is a screen reader made by GW Micro, who is now merged with another company, but they're out of Indiana. So we bought that uh, through the state, bought that for students who needed that across the state. And that grant lasted for quite a few years and it was a great. JAWS was another screen reader that people started using and it kind of fell by the wayside because of the way they, they run their authorization keys and their price. They were always higher. And recently, like um, Firefox, which is open source, we have an NVDA screen reader, which is open source screen reader. Uh, this screen reader is in, available to be downloaded from, the, you know, from a website on any computer. Put it on, you're ready to go. NVDA works wonderfully with Google products. Google products have not been accessible in the past minimally accessible, I couldn't, shouldn't say not. You could do some things. 
But when everybody said, oh, let's do uh, Google Docs, Google Drive, everybody who was blind or visually impaired would cringe. Oh, geez. <laughs> um, that's why, as you saw on my computer, the Iowa Braille School is using Dropbox right now because they haven't, we haven't switched yet. But it just wasn't accessible. Now with NVDA, and JAWS is getting better at it too, most Google things are all accessible now. I was recently at a conference in California where we had a rep from Google come and talk to us about the accessibility of their products. One thing that came up was the use of Chromebooks. Um, Chromebooks are big in a lot of places, including Iowa. And we said that they're wonderful. You know, people love them. They're great. For low vision kids, they're not because they were so small. Well, now they make a 15 inch Chromebook. For blind students, they were horrible because you had to use Chromevox, which was Google's proprietary screen reader. In order to access anything in Chromevox, it required you to be a, an acrobat because you had to hold down four keys to do one task. So you had to do function, control, alt, p. To, to, I mean, it was awful. So the Google reps let us know that now Chromevox Next is in beta, and they're testing that. And they're minimizing a whole lot of commands. So hopefully that'll make uh, Chromebooks much more accessible for students who are blind or visually impaired. Note takers. Note takers um, for students are basically, and I can display this after I do the web thing on the computer, but note takers are basically a laptop computer with a refreshable braille display at the bottom of them. So there's a 32 cell display at the bottom of this. So there's crystals and pins in this display that pop up as you scroll and you're able to read braille right on this device. Refreshable Braille displays are expensive. That's why I said the <coughs> Braille, this is a Braille Sense made by HIMS, which is a company out of Korea with a US-based office in Texas. So they're over $5,000 due to the refreshable Braille display. If you look on the internet and Google things, there's rumors of companies coming out with ones that are pneumatic, liquid or air-powered, full page Braille displays that will cost 500 bucks. If that happens, that will revolutionize what we can do as people who are blind or visually impaired. These note takers have um, word processing, we have email, we have media capabilities, so such as doing recordings, there's a YouTube app. We're able to do note take, or excuse me, planning and address books. We're able to get on the internet, do social networking. Um, Bookshare, do you guys know about Bookshare? Bookshare is an organization, um, I think it's owned by Benetech. What it is, is if a document is uh, in print and you want to provide access to that document for a student who is blind, putting that in Braille or an electronic format does not infringe on copyright. So Bookshare is a company that, as an adult, I pay $50 a year. I'll tell you the story about, remind me to tell about my wife hating Bookshare. Um, <laughs> I pay $50 a year and I'm able to access books and download them and read them. So these are done by volunteers. The books are scanned in and then translated into braille or audio format for students and adults across the world. When I was a student and a young kid, um, to put it in context, let's say the new Harry Potter book came out. When I was a kid, it would have taken a year to get that in braille and be able to read it with my friends. When the last four or five Harry Potter books came out, they were on Bookshare the next day. So it, it was incredible that kids were able to have that access to things. So using a um, note taker, you're able to go onto the Bookshare website, log in with your credentials, search for a book, download it, and I can read it right on this device. It's amazing. Braille takes up so much space. Um, Stephen King's book, It, I remember reading that in high school, was 12 volumes in Braille. My father had shelves in the garage for Braille books. When Bookshare came out, I mean, and things like that, I mean, it's, it's just not needed. It's amazing. It's not to say we don't teach students Braille. Any student who needs Braille in the state of Iowa and will use that for their education gets it. There's been a lot of statistics out there and things you'll read that say, oh, only 10% of the blind population is literate. Well, they're not looking at students with multiple disabilities, students with learning disabilities. So they're counting them, if they have visual impairment, as not being literate. 
well, you know, we do the best we can, but some students that have extreme learning disabilities do not learn Braille. Um, as far as internet, so I use in my job multiple things. I have two iPhones, a Braille Sense, a computer, uh, a Braille Note, which is another note taker. Um, what else do I use? I don't know. Multiple things. But kind of this morning, I wanted to kind of show you on my computer. Um, am I, is my visual working, Zara? Yeah. Okay. Um, what I have open on my, my computer is, a, is JAWS, the screen reader. Basic screen reader navigation is the same. So people who are blind or visually impaired, when they use a screen reader, do not use the mouse. Everything is done by keyboard because we can't see where the cursor is. So most of the keyboard commands that I use on a computer, sighted people can use too. You can tab through links. You can do those things. Tab, search edit. Wow, that's really loud. Sorry. Search button. Search with navigation. List of link has link has pop up and link has pop up. Got it. Escape. Tab. Academics has pop up link. Okay, so if I'm on Windows my D, folder I'm on my desktop, I'm able to navigate around by using the arrow keys. Adobe Acrobat X Pro. DBT 11. Point, Adobe Acrobat Recycle Bin. FS Reader 3. Point, downloads. Schedule Grantwood AE8 and Coralville. Dropbox Iowa Braille School. So I'm just using my arrow keys to navigate around. If I wanted to go to the search box in the start menu, I can just hit the Windows key. Menu, search box edit. And I can type, um, let's say I want to open Word. O R D. Microsoft Word when enter, leaving menus, cancel button, opening Microsoft Word. Document 1 Microsoft Word, print, edit. So it told me I'm in a document, print, edit means I can type. So I can type V O O D space O R A I D space E V E R Y O N E. Enter. Good morning, everyone. So you're able to do all those things in there. If I Land. wanted to bold that, I can do Alt B. Um, on. Off. On. I S T A I S O L D I F G. B. Oops. B. 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 Wrong key. Off. Enter. So. Knowing keyboard commands enables students to be able to access Microsoft Word um, and able to do most things in here. I can print, I can save. Control S, save as dialog, file escape, print, edit. I can. Backstage view, print, group, file escape, print, edit. Doing all this by Control P for print, Control S for save. If I want to access the menu bar, I can hit the Alt key. Upper ribbon, home tab, insert tab, page layout tab. References tab, mailings tab, escape, leaving menus, edit. And the standard command to get out of anything in Windows is Alt F4. Alt F4, Microsoft, don't save button. So, that, this is using JAWS. Um, if, I, if I shut JAWS off and turned on window eyes, it would be the same commands. If I shut off JAWS and turn on NVDA, it would be the same commands. People just have an opinion. Some people might like... Um, I don't know, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts coffee, okay? So certain blind people have an opinion on which screen reader they enjoy or feel that works the best for them. My opinion recently is window eyes has become quite sluggish. I'm using JAWS and NVDA mostly. And I'll probably be struck down by window eyes folks now that I've said that. But, <laughs> um, I don't know why that is. I don't know. They merged with another company that makes a screen enlarging software called ZoomText. So they've merged with AI squared. So I don't know that, I don't know, has something fallen by the wayside? I'm not really sure. Um, if we wanted to go to the internet, Windows 3. I'm going to launch Firefox. Mozilla Firefox, about land. Google Mozilla Firefox, Google Mozilla Firefox. Tap. So it tells me I'm on Google and it made that little, did you hear that little sound? Yeah. If I can do it. Tab, Google, Google, shift tabs. That means I can type. Tab, Google, shift tab, search. So I can type there. It's telling me I'm in an edit field. So if I want to tab, I'm going to go through the links on the Google page. Tab, Google search button. Tab, I'm feeling wonderful button. Tab, privacy link. Tab, terms link. Tab, settings button collapsed. Shift, 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 tab. Yes, show me link. So I can tab and I can shift tab. Um, Google. If I wanted to know if there's any buttons on this page to interact with, the word button starts with a B, so I would push the letter B. Google search button. There's a button. I'm feeling lucky button. Settings button collapsed. I wanted to know if there were any Google. check boxes on this page. I can push an X. No check boxes. There's no check boxes. If I wanted to find Google. 
Any combo boxes. I can push a C. No selectable area controls, combo boxes, list boxes, or tree views. If I want to uh, move through headings. No headings. No headings. I can push an H. Google. So let's do a Google search. Search edit collapsed. Enter. Search region. Let's type in... Um, A-I-E-S-B-I-O-W-A. Enter. Google. I sure can. Thank you. What's the link for that? Control F. W. W. Dup, 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 period. I A. I A. State S T A E. Period. E. Okay. Enter Ames, Iowa, Google search. Iowa State University, Mozilla. The best key on the keyboard for me is the shut up key, which is the control key. <laughs> Sometimes screen readers talk way too much. I was at a school the other day and I taught a student that and he said, but we're not supposed to say shut up. I said, <laughs> Sorry. I said, that's just what I call it. It's the be quiet key. Iowa State University. Same page link, skip navigation, alt shift two. Okay, so we're on the Iowa State page. I'm going to tab through a little bit so I can orient myself. I get a lot of questions from teachers around the state about, well, how do they do this on this web page? How do they do that? And I said, you don't automatically know how to do it on a, something on a web page without looking at it first as a blind person. You just have to go and experience it. So, you know, I'll say, well, send me the link, I'll look at it, and I'll give you some feedback. So they don't, there aren't, every web page is different. Some web pages may have things where someone didn't label an image and it just says image, 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 image. You gotta tag your images, you gotta label them. Or it may just say graphic, graphic, graphic. We had a new secretary who is no longer with us this year um, at the Iowa Braille School who sent out a flyer. I opened the flyer, this is for a conference we had, and it just said graphic one, graphic two, graphic three, graphic four. So I called her, I said, what in the world is that? And she said, oh, well, I put the picture of 23 pencils at the top of the graphic, or the email. I said, don't do that. <laughs> I said, we can't, f I can't find, and she said, the other, we have other staff that are visually impaired as well. And she said, yeah, somebody else just called me too. I said, it might look cool, but don't do that. Just please just make the flyer. We don't need graphics of 23 pencils at the top of our flyer. Tab, skip navigation, alt, tab, sign mail link, tab, outlook link, tab, blackboard link, tab, access plus link, tab, directory link, tab, maps link, link, say link, contact us, guaya case load changes to list and nest list and list of one item, list of one items nesting level one. Link index A Z. List and nest list and banner. Search region. Search alt shift S. Blank edit. Banner region. Search button. Search region end. Visited link graphic Iowa State University. Old navigate list of sick link has pop up admissions. Link has pop up academics. So this is a pretty good page. Everything is listed pretty well. Is there another spot you guys would like me to try and find? Iowa State. On this page? Or a site you want me to, or spot you want me to go to off of this page? Okay, so what I would do is look for index A to Z, and I heard that, so I'm wondering if, a lot of times what I do on web pages, I use the find feature of the screen reader, so I would do a control F. Jaws find dialog, A, F, D, E, X, enter, link index A, Z. Look, index A, Z. Enter, index A, Z, link, a Z index, Iowa State University, Mozilla, Firefox, five regions, two headings. How did you a Z do that again? I did a control F with Jaws. That's one thing where they differ. Screen readers have different find commands. So JAWS is Control F. Window Eyes is Alt Control F. Um, NVDA is Insert. Oh, I'll have to pull it up and do it. So I'm newer to NVDA. But that works really well on a website. So I have students do that a lot if they're looking to find something. Like, well, I want to find the, the email. Well, great. Go and do a find and type email. And nine times out of ten, it'll find you the link to that. JAWS find M E state enter screen find root enter uh, let's see. same page search alt shift S heading level one to Z index link A link B let's go to so I'm gonna go down link, to link, M. link 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 L link M link N link M enter main region M link a Z index Iowa State University Mozilla Firefox five regions two headings and one hundred fourteen links so it told me five regions two headings and hundred and fourteen links <laughs> on this page so I can look for the text on this page the farmhouse museum by Link Timothy Cullinan, via, link ISO photo stream, blank, heading level 3 index submissions, blank, send your requests for index additions or corrections to, send mail links attained at Estate, edu. 
So we can complain to somebody there. Look at that. Main link content for visited link link to your efficiency review. Aim send mail link wrapping the top. A Z index head link A link B. Right. The farmhouse music link list end. Bullet link bullet link music step. Bullet link museums. Bullet link multicultural vision program. Bullet link military science. Bullet link metabolomics research. Bullet link meteorology. Bullet link merchandise. Bullet link merchandise. Iowa State. Bullet link memorial unit. Bullet link media relations. Bullet link mechanical engineering. Depth of. There it is. Enter. Main region. Mechanical engineering. Depth of link. Mechanical engineering. College of engineering. Iowa State University. Mozilla Firefox. Mechanical engineering. College of engineering. Iowa State University. RSS feeds. Eight regions. Six headings and 31 links. Eight regions. Six head headings. 31 links. So let's look for the text with an N. Search code. Don't ask me why it's N. It used to be X, but they changed it because of the check boxes. Mechanical engine. Excuse me. No. There's a carousel, so carousels are typically not very accessible. No. Search Koei Alt Shift Koei Menu Track Map. Carousels aren't very accessible. Why not? Because it's an image showing images, and it's not. We'll read the alt text as it goes. I'm going to try and get there and let me see. Koei Banner End Banner Visited Link Mechanical Engineering Blank Link Graphic 06 FB Logo Banner End Menu Main Region Article Link Iowa State Engineer Blank Iowa State Engineer Finds New Ways to See Data Trade Sold Blank 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Head Blank Heading Level 2 Welcome Blank The Department of Mechanical Engineering at Iowa State University is a community of faculty, staff, partners Blank Main Office Hours So where would I go to find this? Anybody want to give me? I passed it. I passed it. Blank 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 Two one blank change agent basker gamma Romanian clickable article link Iowa State engineer models heart valves wind turbines for better designs performance. Yeah. Okay, so as I move to that different spot, when it changes, it's telling article. me different things. Link Chloe McPherson National Publications chairperson. So that does work, yes. Link link Chloe McPherson National. So I wonder article. if I enter on Chloe. Link Iowa State engineer. Oh, she's gone already. Link link Iowa State engineer finds new ways to enter. Iowa State Engineer finds new ways to see data. Trained soldiers help doctors. Mozilla Firefox. RSS feeds. Three headings and 37. Heading level one. Iowa State Engineer finds new April 29th, 2015. This is pulling up the article on this, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Link, link graph proceed. So I've let's say I read. Land. Elliot Weiner likes to show off the magic and usefulness of immersive virtual reality. So there you were in the middle of Iowa State's Link Mirage Lab, taking a shift at a military checkpoint. Okay, so let's so go. I have a question. Yes. Um, when you were trying to find that carousel, um, could you tell, I mean, you knew you were looking for a carousel, so you knew when it went away, um, you know, it had moved to the next image. Um, would you have figured that out if you didn't know you were looking for a carousel? No. no. So is there, would it be helpful to somehow label these, even if it's just in that same alt text, to say something like, you know, carousel image or something? Yes. If you put something that said carousel, carousel below, carousel image, that might, that might work. So some way that we I don't even know if you'd have to label all the images because it kind of had an alt text with those, but if you just said has carousel or carousel below, something right. on that page would let you know, oh, there's a carousel. And if I was navigating that page without knowing, I would think, why does this keep changing? <laughs> or rotating image or rotating article. That's what I've heard, rotating image. It said rotating image before. If you could say there um, persons with content visibility, for example, you might want to um, have Okay. Like we've got a curriculum flowchart that's a, a PDF. What's your experience with things like that? I'm assuming it just comes up as a... Comes up as a PDF. And so what, what do you do with that? Do you want the JAWS handle the PDF? Yes. Okay. I'm to take to it. Yep. Uh, I'll try, I can try to navigate there. I don't even know exactly how to get there, but... Um, what, I go get off this, this carousel? Yeah, so at, at the top, there's a, there's a link to undergraduate. Iowa State Engine. JAWS 5 U F D E R Enter. The company was launched in 2000. No, I didn't I think, find. I think maybe it's under student. 
Link login. I think you're off the website. You're on the Link login. Okay, Iowa State Engine. Jaws fast. U D. Enter. Link students. There. Enter students link. Yeah, I think you may have to go back to the mechanical engineering. Um, blank. Blank. Okay. Blank. Mechanical, mechanic link coe directory, link coe site index. There's, a, there's an ME menu right above the graphics. Search coe all. Blank, blank, sign on's clickable, banner, visited link graphic Iowa State University, link graphic college of engineering. Above that? Uh, below that. Coe banner end, banner, visited link mechanical engineering, blank. Link graphic 06FB logo. Uh, let's see, what, what's it called? Well, there, there's an element there called ME menu which creates a drop down. Jaws via e -N -U, enter. Coe menu trigram for heaven clickable. Hmm. Banner end. Banner. Visited link mechanical engineering. Let's just go. Blank. <coughs> hey Chad. Maybe, maybe this is a good time to add something. So right now, we are trying to design responsive websites. Okay. And those websites respond based upon the width of the browser. And your width right now, because you've got a history box up on the on the far left, okay. is such that it's throwing the website into a mobile view. Okay. So instead of the normal menus that would be arranged, it's throwing you into a, a mobile view. Okay. Is there any way for us to make individuals aware of that? I don't know. Or I didn't even know that was showing up. Is that the history of my history, or is it the website history? It's, Visit it's your history. my history. Alt tab. I was State University Google Chrome. <laughs> Alt F4. Mechanical and Alt tab. Folder view. Alt tab. Mechan. Alt space. Menu X. Menu bar. Mechanical. Still there. Yep. Uh, okay. Yep. Banner. Huh. No, I didn't even know that shows. So. Yeah. Don't worry. It just shows. It just shows today, yesterday, and the last seven days. It doesn't right. Show anything you oh, I don't care. There's nothing. <laughs> Visit it. <laughs> don't, th don't think I'm dumb enough to not look at anything bad on my work computer. So. <laughs> That's why I have my own computer. So, uh, you know, yeah, did, that, did the same thing, did it change the menu if you enlarged it and do it in large screens with, you know, um, blowing it up? Did that do the it, limit? Did that change what, what people see also? It shouldn't change what they see. It just makes it larger and they have to do more scrolling because they can only get so much on a screen. Blank. Link graphic 06 up. Link visited link mechanical engineering. Banner. Banner end. Okay, I'm not finding... Banner. Visit the link banner at me main region. Me menu trigram for heaven clickable. Me menu, what's that saying? Try... Menu. Trigram for heaven. Stands for mechanical engineering. And then, it, then it's saying... Menu. Trigram for heaven. Something for heaven. Menu. Enter. Jaws find you at -E -R. enter, link undergraduate program, enter, navigation region, undergraduate program link, undergraduate program Mozilla Fire. That one? Yeah, and then I think if you <coughs> down on that, below on that page, you can find the flow chart. Jaws find L, O, the enter, link 20152016, me undergraduate degree requirements flow cart. Flow cart. <laughs> <laughs> Enter primary site bar complementary region two zero one five two. This is why I asked you about this. I wanted to see what was going to happen when you got to this. I don't know. It's, it scared my screen reader. Hold on. Tab H T link H link 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 H T T P link H T tab browser tab tool bar shift shift tab Jenna Eken one hundred one or one hundred two E N G R one hundred Eken one hundred one or one hundred two clickable E N G R one hundred one clickable. So it says clickable. Orientation clickable. Math 165 clickable. This flow chart is pretty intensive. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I don't know. Any idea how many objects that were up there even? Mm, I don't know if I can look. About 100. F8. Math 100 or EEEC genetic click. So, for a blind student, they would <laughs> open this up. Toggle sidebar premium next page. One of two, present print button, download same tools button, zoom out button, zoom and zoom, combo, Janet Eakin 100, Janet clickable. For them, they're just going to, it's just going to see it as a list, unfortunately. So this is, this is opened up Acrobat within Firefox. Firefox. Yes. If you want to make a PDF accessible, there are ways to do mm -hmm. that before you put it up. You have to check it by, you, by using either... Acrobat uh, Professional, it has an accessibility, accessibility function. Mm -hmm. Or 
are there are other ways that I that kind of come to mind right now, but I'll I'll share that with you. So you know we kind of see things up and down. I mean it doesn't really. You can one end orientation clickable. I'm curious if I click orientation, what'll happen? So I'm gonna see. Enter. Gen Eden 100 1 or 100 2 E N G R 100 1 orientation math 165 calculus. Uh oh. Well, okay, I didn't think the shut up key was gonna work. All right. Combo box automatic zoom. Gen Eden E N G R 1 orientate math 1 calculus. I check M N crit math alpha fit or lit M crit M E 1. Analysis clickable, correct, math first year clickable, 14 clickable, CR clickable, 16 clickable, CR clickable. Yeah, see, I, not knowing your program, I wouldn't know where, where to look, but I, mean, I don't know. Stop. EM320. It does open it, it does show those, but I don't know what you would do then. Space. <coughs> correct. I've got a basic question when you first go onto a page, you know, where it announces so many sections, so mm -hmm. many headers. Uh, what good is knowing the sections to you? Uh, it isn't to me. So I don't even know what a section is. Is it like the header or the body? Does the header, the page, know? the body, where the, the main part is, um, I believe is what it's doing. It may be saying that. Sometimes if there's frames, it'll say frames. So it really is, it has no navigational value for you. Oh, I'm going to try one section or another because you don't really move that way. Correct. I would move by headings, by tab, by text. By edit boxes, combo boxes, check boxes. What do you get when there's an iframe on a web page that's linking to a different site? Do you want to take into one? You got an idea um, of one? Let me see if, if I can. If you go to undergraduate www.extension. Control L, map, duck, double, duck, period, E, X, G, N, E, search your E. See, now everybody gets to watch me try and type. Double, double, duck, period, E, X, T, E, N, A, O, N. Period. I A S T A T E period E T U. Forward slash. Slash. Viticulture. Who? Viticulture B I T I T I C U L T U R E. Yes. Okay. Let's see. Enter tab panel primary site bar complementary user Genetic and one hundred one or one hundred two. And then there's a link um, that says events. Viticulture, document, banner, list of seven visited, link ISU, link news, link videos, JAWS find E, V, E, N, enter, link events, enter, banner region, navigation region, events link, events viticulture, Mozilla Firefox, events viticulture, one frame, six regions, 55 headings and 85 links. Okay. That whole page is an iframe. Heading level two, you are here. Visited link home. Heading level two, more like this clickable, complimentary, blank. Heading level one, events, article, events frame, same page link, jump to navigation. Link graphic home. Visited link W double link list of four I heading level one events. Heading level six. Heading level two. Heading level two northern grapes webinar series. Heading level three presented live the second Tuesday of each month. Separator. Blank. Heading level five twelve o'clock noon eastern eleven. So now I'm saying, oh look, it's going by headings, so I'll go headings. Seven PM Eastern, six PM Central, heading level five. Other calendar events heading level three. Heading level five. November seventh, twenty fifteen, heading level five. Heading level six, third annual national wine tourism day. All right, look at that. Heading level six, link HTT. Okay, seems to work. The headings help people navigate. Yes. Navigate. Well, so when you program, you're about coding your website, you should structure it in a way that you know, the head, headings help orientate the user. So when we're working with students K-12, I kind of see it. My job is to get them ready to come to you all. So. Recently, um, we've had a push in the state to work with note takers, get kids really good with note takers. Well, that doesn't always transfer into the real world of note takers. So the, the computer push um, in the state for blind students that were straight academic seems to have dropped off. We're trying to change that. So we're working with the Iowa Department for the Blind out of Des Moines. That's our um, voc rehab for blind students to work with them to make sure our students have what they need when they come to college, such as being able to access different programs. I mean, I don't know what, you know, what are some things that students would access computer-wise from you guys that, that, I, that I could say, you know, I could work with my teachers, you know, hey, if the kid's gonna go here, they need to know how to do this. Do you use Blackboard? Do you use, you know, anything like that would be very helpful to me too. Blackboard is the, I think most predominantly used um, learning management system on campus, even though 
know some people tend to use others, but that's the one that I think was more spread. Okay. So I don't know if you want to briefly go through it, and I won't have to use three more because uh, it's you know, almost an hour. See, right. I'm fine. I, I don't know Blackboard very well, to be honest with you. Okay. So, but, you know, that's one thing that's on the list of places to go to. Um, Land. Talking about mechanical engineering, students who are blind and visually impaired um, in the past, it seems that math had been an area that they were lacking in. We now have, have had for the last few years a science and math consultant for the state. We're really pushing that. We're running a camp this summer on robotics. We're really working with our students in the areas of you know, math and science to try and increase that because that's an area where some of our students seem to have, have dropped off a lot. And there is ways in accessing those things is very easy, easy to do now for students and there's ways to do a lot of that. So do you want me to show a note taker up on the screen quick or <coughs> you can give me a second and ask any questions as I turn on my stuff that'd be fine. Is it possible to have too many headers? Defense with a culture Mozilla Firefox. <laughs> What's that? Is it possible to go crazy and have too many headers or are they always good? They're always fine. So, so on the pictures you're on that are the events, mm -hmm. one of the things I noticed that I wouldn't have done is they were going down to like heading level six and using heavy, heading level six for the text of the event. Okay. So it seems to me that you want the heading for the event title, but then you would want normal text. Text underneath that instead of having a secondary heading. Instead of having a next level of heading. Yes, that, level, level. you're correct. That did increase the amount of headings. So now that you say that, I did notice that. Okay, let's see. We want, so what I did is I hooked up my VGA to this um, note taker, and now I can go in and So are you guys seeing anything up there? Yep, saved option. Okay. So this is my main screen and my note taker. So I can scroll through these. Um, as far as documents for students, if you want a blind student or whatever to have access to a document, saving that document as a Word file works. Um, it'll work up to Word 2016. Um, saving it as a PDF will work. The issue comes in when students have to do a little more work if it's a scanned image. So we'll open up a PDF and it'll say page is blank because all it is is seeing a picture of what you scanned in. JAWS and the other screen readers now have the ability to take that image and do OCR with it and have it appear on the screen so we're able to read it. Um, I'd got one the other day though that someone filled out by hand and it was scanned in. Well, it doesn't read handwriting very well. So all the stuff the parent had wrote on the form, I couldn't read. So, um, so the short of it is that we shouldn't be putting PDFs that are not accessible. So when you scan something, try to save it as a PDF instead of printing it. Mm -hmm. So Braille's made up of six dots, so I just typed on there. Can you guys see what I typed? Yep. Okay. So I just typed that in Braille, but it made it so you guys can read it, so it translates that. So Braille's made up of six dots, and this has a space bar and a backspace and a return key. Um, it has speech as well on this device. I don't ever use it. Let's see. How do you turn it on? Um, so I... So it does have speech capabilities as well. Um, so let's say um, this one does use Dropbox. We have a new um, company. The company that makes the Braille Note, which is the competitor of this device, has a new one coming out called a Braille Note Touch. So if anybody wants to Google that, it looks like an iPad, but a little bigger with a refreshable Braille display built right into the bottom of it. And it's a registered Google product. So it will work with all Google Docs, whatever. So they're changing the whole game. So this company that makes the Braille Sense is probably going, uh-oh, because <laughs> they're still using Dropbox on here and they're behind. So it'll be interesting to see what comes of that, um, that device. But basically it's a flat, 
you can you can put a keyboard on but basically it's a flat glass screen and you lay your hands on it and it vibrates and you type right on the glass um, they just I think they're gonna start shipping this month I got to see a prototype in California last month um, they're, they're pretty neat. so in here I can go to bookshare I can download NLS books um, what else can I show you on this device I can go into a calculator the calculator on note takers is scientific calculator. It's not just a two plus two. You can do, you can do, uh, i be honest with you, I'm not a, a math person because I was, grew up in the era where <laughs> blind kids didn't get a whole lot of math support. So, but you're able to do, um, let's see. If we can go into, I don't know, let me out of there. So. So you can do arc sine, you can do hyperbolic, you can do everything, cosine. So the calculator is pretty, pretty good on these. Students are now able to take this device and type uh, math assignments on it, save it as an RTF file and email it to their teacher. And then the teacher is able to open up and it translates what they did in Braille into rich text and they can read their math homework, which has never happened before. Questions? Chad, I got a question about uh, word formatting. We are kind of looking at saving them as RTF. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the best practices? Because word for, if we put it as word, sometimes people don't have the same version and it may not open up on the desktop. So we kind of talking about saving them as RTF. RTF will work. Usually, um, I'm running Word 2010 on here, but I know that if it's Office 2013 or whatever, 2016, usually they have a thing that will let you back translate to Word 2010. So either way would be fine, I would think. I have a question. Well, I guess with that. I appreciate you guys letting me come out today. I hope I've given you some information. If you will please uh, sign the or write in your your name so that I can send you more information. I really appreciate it. Thank you for coming. And there's some coffee on I think water. I want to see the refreshable Braille yeah, display on this device. I don't want to work